the whole thing with the senator was really interesting. I mean, from the moment I saw him, I kind of knew where it was going. You know, it's it's part of pop culture today, you know. 27, I think, years later. 28 after tomorrow night, I guess. Anyway, that being said, it still had an impact, you know, when I found out. I mean, when I saw him, I was thinking, ah, he's gonna be like the next Hitler or something, right? I like that we don't find out exactly what country it is being, you know, so... I mean, back then, probably like Russia. So, the Soviet Union, you know, the wall hadn't fallen when this movie was made. And obviously not when the book was written either. Today, it could mean other places, you know. It's nice that they don't directly say, because it would be kind of awkward. No, we know that Russia would do, you know... It's better to leave it unsaid. It also leaves room for, you know, today you can imagine it somewhere else, because why would the U.S. bomb the Soviet uh, Russia today, you know? I have to wonder, though, did he actually stand there holding his hand, you know, at the parade, for as long as the scene took to play out because it was maybe a minute and a half, maybe two minutes. Isn't that an awful long time to be grabbing someone else's hand, especially against their will and when they're clearly uncomfortable with it? That did seem a little, I don't know, maybe it goes much faster, you know, he just realizes it and, you know, the same way a dream can feel like you're spending way more time than you actually are somewhere, you know. I liked the... I don't remember the character's name, but the the boy that Walken tutors his father, you know, the description of the um, politician there, Greg Stilson, that you can't trust him, but if he does get power, you want him to think of you as a friend. You know, and you see the scene where he blackmails that guy. I think they pushed the joke a little much with the whole, that's not your wife, is it? I mean, there were like three punchlines to that or something. I think they should have just quit after, I haven't seen her, but I don't think it's her on this picture. That was enough. I, th You know, then he goes and picks it up. No, wait, this is her, isn't it? That's not her on that picture, but it's her on this. Okay, we get it. Stop. It's just getting to be obnoxious now. And the line, you know, you stay out of the campaigning business, I stay out of the publishing business, that was pretty good. On the subject of the boy, that is one of the places where the movie really doesn't have the dramatic weight, the gravitas, that it's supposed to spend all this time developing this relationship between them and then the kid disappears from the movie as soon as he doesn't die from the you know hockey incident wouldn't be the first time someone's died from hockey I think but anyway I mean Walken confirms yes he's still alive but that's it you know then we never see the boy or his father again in the movie. I like the ending. It was a nice sort of twist on I thought that maybe he would make it, you know, that he would kill the guy. But I like that it just showed his true nature, you know. I've heard some people complaining about, oh, how did Stilson know that the baby was little Denny, you know, that the assassin knew about it. That's really not the point. It's supposed to add some dramatic weight, you know, some further effect to it that it's a baby we know, but apparently that wasn't the original idea. It's not like that in the book. It was because apparently Walken, like, joked on set, you know, oh no, it's Denny, and then, you know, Cronenberg liked that idea, so he wrote the scene with her near him and Denny right there. 
the idea is just that he's holding up a baby as a human shield, you know, who does that? And that really worked, and that, you know, just the, the image of that destroyed his political career, of course, you know. And that he just, you know, grabs his hand and sees that, you know, and blood splatter on, uh, you know, the cover of the magazine. I do think the thing of her in between sobs saying, I love you, which we don't actually see her lips moving, and it was apparently dubbed. It seems like a studio decision, and it probably was. I don't know. I think it would have worked out better without, but as it is, the story is a bit lacking. You could kind of write out the entire ex-wife thing and have it be a random baby there, and it wouldn't really make that much of a difference, because it doesn't really impact his actions. I mean, okay, he writes the goodbye letter, but, you know, remove that bit of narration, and poof, we no longer need the ex-wife there, ex-girlfriend there, ex fiance Anyway, I read that apparently one suggested ending, but rejected was he survived being gunned down. When I read that, I was thinking, oh, come on. But then he would get a premonition of her being stabbed, and then he would go into a coma and die before he could do something. That I really like. That was also my thought when he was like, you know, okay, I'll die myself, but it'll be worth it. What if someone comes a little later. I mean, yes, he was dying from the ability, but maybe Stilson wasn't the last one he could have made sure to stop, you know? Maybe there would be someone else, maybe even a greater threat. He's hardly the only lying politician, you know, the only power-hungry guy out there who can convince people using easy solutions. I mean, we don't really hear his policies, but I think it says a lot that, you know, the guy comes up to the house, you know, Denny's father, and he's like, oh, he's on the side of you whether you're poor or well-off. Uh, yeah, no. That, it, it kind of have to choose. You can't make everyone happy. That's not what politics are. Politics is choosing something you want to focus on, and then doing the best you can to help that area. You know, there's not enough money to help everyone. Anyway, rant over. I did kind of think that, you know, what about the next guy? What about future accidents that he could prevent? It did sort of dawn on me as I was watching the movie that the show early edition, I think it's called. You know, the guy gets the newspaper from tomorrow every single day. That's kind of the No Stones edition of The Dead Zone, isn't it? I mean, it's not always that people are dying in that, but it's still that kind of thing of, you know, something's gonna happen and you have to stop it, and... Anyway. I suppose that is about it. I like the revelation with the five years have gone by, you know, and I guess that's why he wasn't hurt. I mean, you know, it healed, you know, he was maybe operated on and, you know, whatever scars, surgical scars, may have healed somewhat, I don't know. Man, it would have been good if they had spent more time and effort on the whole I've been gone for five years, but it just feels like yesterday to me, thing, you know. So yeah, that is it. Those were my thoughts on The Dead Zone. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.